In this video, we will go over how to install Docker using the convenient script. As you can see here, in the past, every time I needed to install Docker, I used to go to the official documentation and follow the steps for my distribution. Let me go there and show you what I mean. If I come to Debian, Debian is the distro that I use and is the one that I'll be using in this video, but any other Debian distributions should work, like Ubuntu, for example. So in here, you can find the different installation methods. This is the one that I used to follow in the past using the apt repo. But there's also another option here on the page. Let me look for convenience. And here it is. Install using the convenience script. And if you want to check out a little bit more, you can come here and read this section. So going back to the guide. Notice here that this guide applies if you install Docker Engine on a Linux server using one of the supported distributions. This is not a guide to install Docker Desktop on Linux, Windows, or Mac OS. The first thing I'm going to do is deploy a new VM. Let me go here. I'm going to deploy a new VM. This is just a script that I created for myself. I'm going to name this VM Docker 4. I'm going to save this file. I'm going to give it two cores, and I'm going to give it four gigs of RAM. So I'm going to save this. Here I get a summary. I'm going to type yes to continue here. And the installation is going to start. It's going to take a few minutes, but I'm going to speed this up. Okay, so the VM is created. Let me show it to you real quick. Let me log in here. Okay, so here's the VM. So let's go back to the guide. Okay, so as you can see, the distro that I'm using is Debian. This guide is going to be in the video description, so you can follow along and you will be able to find all the commands there so you can copy and paste. I have two options here in the guide. This is a script that I created that does everything. It's just going to run if Docker is not installed. Make sure you have pseudo permissions. Shows you the different Docker versions that are available and ask you which one you want to install. It's going to add your user to the Docker group so you can run Docker commands without pseudo. And then it's going to run the convenience script. And the convenience script is the one that we find here in the documentation. You can see it if you click here. So it opens it and then you can read what this script does. Also, if you want to understand what this other script that I created does, you can go and inspect it in GitHub. Just open this link in a new tab. OK, so I have it here. You can go and inspect it, but it basically does the things that I mentioned here. So let me run it. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to SSH into my host right now. SSH Docker 4. I'm logged into the host right now. This is the first time. I'm going to clear the screen. And I'm going to paste the script here and execute it. So notice that it gives you an overview of what the script is going to do here at the top. You can also specify the Docker version that you want to install. So let's say that, for example, I'm running Docker Swarm and I want to install the same version that I have installed in other hosts. I can do that. I'm going to switch to one of my other Docker hosts real quick so you can see what version I have there. OK, so here I'm um, SSH'd into my Docker 3 host. Notice it's a different one. Let me see what version I have installed there. With Docker version, I can see it's 26.0.2. If you're running Docker Swarm, you can also see what version each one of your hosts has with the Docker node ls command. As you can see here, all of my nodes are on the same version. So I'm just going to grab this one, for example. This is the one that I want to install. And here it shows me the latest 15 versions. Notice that if you leave it blank, it's going to install the latest version, which is this one on the top. First, I'm going to install a specific version, which is this one. And then we're going to install the latest one so you can see how it works. So I'm going to hit enter here. It's going to take a few minutes to install. Here you can see the version that it's installing, 26.02. Notice that it detected my Debian version, which is bookworm. I'm going to speed this up and I'll see you when it's done. OK, so the installation is done. I print the message here at the very bottom. Notice the version that was installed and my user was added to the Docker group. It says here that you have to exit the shell and then run Docker PS to make sure that it's working fine. If I run Docker PS without exiting, it's not going to work. As you can see here, Docker PS, it's going to show you this permission denied error. So I'm going to exit and log back into the host. I'm going to type exit here. I'm going to SSH back into Docker 4. So I'm logged in. Now I'm going to type Docker PS. If you see this heading, that means everything's working fine. So you can start deploying containers. Notice how I'm switching between my Docker 4 and my Docker 3 servers. 
I'm using a keyboard shortcut. If I press Hyper-V space, I can switch between them. I have a video on how to do that and you'll be able to find that on the top right corner. And I'm also navigating between my different hosts or directories using Tmux in my terminal. So you can see here, if I press Hyper-V S, it shows me the different Tmux sessions that I have open. So I have a session for each one of the directories or SSH devices that I use the most. And you can see those here. I also have a video on Tmux. You can find that on the top right corner if you want to learn more. Let me show you which version was installed. If I run here Docker version, notice that it's 2602. And in this other device, I also have the same version. If I run the Docker version command again, you can confirm. So they match. This Docker 4 host is not part of the swarm. I'm not going to add it. I just wanted to install the same version just to show you how you can do that really easily. Now I want to show you real quick how to install the latest version. I'm just going to restore my VM to a snapshot before I install Docker. Let me go here and I'll open this. I'm gonna go to snapshots, revert it. I'm not gonna snapshot before, hit okay. And this is gonna take it back to the state before I install Docker. Now it's rebooting and now it's back. Let me go back to my terminal. The session is gonna be broken here. So I'm gonna log into the device again, SSH Docker 4. Okay, so I'm logged in. Notice that I don't have Docker installed at this moment because I reverted the machine. So I'm going to run the script again, but this time I'm going to install the latest version. Like here in my guide, I'm going to copy the command again. I'm going to paste it. If I don't specify anything here and I hit enter, it's just going to install the latest 26.14. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to take a few minutes again. So I'm going to speed this up and I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so notice that the installation is complete. It did install the version that we wanted, 26.14. Let me confirm this with Docker version. Here you can see it, 26.14. If I run Docker PS, I cannot because I have to exit the session. So I'm doing that right now. I'm logging into the device again. And now if I run Docker PS, if you see the headings, that means you're good. So you can start deploying containers. Let me go back to the guide. There's a few other things that I want to discuss here. If you try to execute the script, but you already have Docker installed, it's not going to let you. It's just going to let you know that it's already installed and it's going to exit. So make sure you run this in a machine that doesn't have Docker installed. Notice that in the page, I also have this configure sudo access section. If the script detects that you don't have sudo permissions with your user, it's going to exit. So I recommend you to set this up. How do you know if you have sudo permissions or not? I do. If I can run this command and it shows me this, it means that I have sudo access. Also, if I run sudo who am I? Notice that I'm root. Let me remove my sudo access and follow the steps real quick so you can see it's really simple. Just gonna hit this to remove my sudo permissions. Now, if I try to run these commands, you will notice that it's gonna ask me for the password. So I'm gonna configure sudo access real quick in less than a minute. Just gonna go back to the guide. I'm gonna get this. Here's a description on what each of the commands do if you want to know more. I'm going to type my root password, which I have it here. Just going to copy, paste, and then I'm going to grab this other part here. And this is going to add my user to the sudo ors file. So I execute that. And now I have sudo access, as you can see here. So you can quickly set that up if you get that warning in the script. So that was option number one where you can just install the all-in-one script that I created. Option number two is here, the convenience script step-by-step. -step. Here's all the instructions on what the script does. If you already ran the script above, you don't need to run this anymore. But if you want to read more on what happens in the background, you can come here. You'll be able to find a lot of useful information there. I also explain why we need to add our user to the Docker group and how we can run Docker commands without sudo. But all of this is done by the script that I created above. Okay, so if you notice, we didn't install any containers. You can install like a hello world container or something, but that is not useful. It's not relevant. If you want to put Docker in practice with a real life scenario, you can follow this video in which I install Windows 11 over the network using Netboot XYZ. I also installed another container, which is Samba, to transfer files between machines. It's a little bit advanced but it's really useful if you want to go and check it out. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you like the channel, subscribe. If you have questions, concerns, if you need any help, leave the comments down below. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.